We're at um, a tributary of the Little Stringy Bark Creek, um, which is a, a waterway flowing out of the Dandenong Ranges out in Mount Evelyn. And believe it or not, this creek suffers from too much water, too much stormwater that is. So up in this catchment there's um, residential development that's been here for quite some time. So the roofs of those houses and the, and the roads are all connected to this stream via curb and channel and underground pipes. And research has shown over the last few years that that really is the, um, the key disturbing um, problem with our creek and it leads to loss of, of habitat um, because we get too much flow too often eroding the creek. Hence we've lost um, a lot of the sensitive plants and animals that keep this stream alive and provide an ecosystem service um, by retaining nutrients within the system and, pre and protecting our downstream um, systems like the Yarra River and Port Phillip Bay. So we're here uh, world first, it's one of these sort of great things, isn't it? world first catchment disconnection project. So by hook or by crook and using all sorts of different methods we're going to stop the water getting into the pipes, uh, put it back into groundwater, use it, um, use it in people's houses so it's going back to sewer uh, and reduce the frequency and the volume of the, the frequency of times that water's coming to the creek and also the volume. We figure if we can work with the community to keep the stormwater in the catchments in systems like I'm sitting in here uh, where we can try and replicate what happened in the catchment back when it was a forest. So the water when it fell on the forest would have infiltrated into the ground, the trees would have sucked up that water, most of it would have gone back up into the air. The sort of systems we're putting in here do the same things, they keep the, keep the water in the ground for as long as possible, let it soak slowly to the stream, get cleaned on the way, restore some lost base flow and more importantly uh, let the plants suck up some of that water and send it back up into the air so that we're reducing that volume of excess flow. The rain garden here is a, a traditional type of one that uses uh, multiple layers. So we have a scoria storage layer at the bottom uh, which stores the water and basically allows time for the water to slowly leak out into the surrounding soils where trees will take it up etc. And then we have a series of what we call transition layers, so a gravel and a coarse sand and a fine sand. Uh, and on top of that, we have our loamy sand material where the plants grow. And we just put those transition layers in to stop it, uh, the, the soil leaking down into the uh, gravel. Uh, so stormwater comes in here from the house, so off the roof, etc., and comes into this pit. If there is any sediment, that'll get trapped in that pit. And then water just uh, leaks out into uh, these pits here either side of me and they uh, then slowly the water level will just build up and spill out onto the rain garden, soak down into the ground. If the rainfall is really really heavy uh, and the whole system fills up then what happens is water will overflow from the top of this pit back uh, into an overflow pipe here and that then goes down into the stormwater system. In this case we've also put uh, an infiltration trench downstream so that any overflow uh, hopefully we'll get captured by that infiltration trench and that trench uses the same sort of principle but a little bit simpler. It's just got the scoria layer and then it's wrapped in a geotextile, this uh, geofabric, uh, and then we backfill it with soil on top so you wouldn't even know it's there, it's hidden in the lawn. Uh, and the geotextile stops the soil leaking into it. Finally at the very end there's another overflow similar to this so that if that trench is full it'll just overflow into the stormwater system. So what we're really trying to do is just turn the stormwater back to what it naturally would have, that most of it infiltrates into the ground and then is evapotranspired away by plants. So we've got lots of plants in these systems and only occasionally will there be a big event that overflows into the, into the council drainage system. A system like this, this more complex system, is uh, probably a few thousand dollars to build, perhaps around you know, $3,000 to build. Uh, whereas our simple infiltration trench you can build probably for around a thousand dollars. So it really depends on what you're wanting, whether you're wanting a much more landscaped feature uh, or whether you're wanting something much more subtle hidden in the garden. Uh, that can also be uh, quite cheaper so it really depends you know, what it is you want for your garden. The, the beauty of a rain garden like this is that if it's carefully designed the maintenance, it's pretty much uh, maintenance free and it's not going to need watering so it doesn't need that uh, work that most gardens need. I suppose look it's, it's um 
got a twofold effect to us. Um, we have a responsibility environmentally, so from my point of view, uh, that's probably one of the ways they've got to go. For me personally, and, a, and the role I play in the council, um, I see this as it's going to have a long-term benefit to me because I, I actually got to try and maintain the underground drainage. And um, the, there is a lot of problems that, with, our, with our drainage systems. This is one way of getting around them. Thank you.